coverage now, breaking news coverage, uh, preempting for now our friend Harvey Levin and TMZ. Um, Christine, as we watch this murder suspect being chased through the streets of Southern California. What I haven't really noticed, Alex, are people on the sidewalks too much or in the crosswalks. We've been lucky given this hour could be a time where people out perhaps, you know, walking to get a bite to eat or walking their dog. We haven't seen a lot of that. It's been a dangerous pursuit with the driver kind of weaving in and out of traffic on the freeway and now kind of maneuvering through these surface streets, kind of staying in the Pomona area. It started in a Riverside area, so not where it originally started. Uh, but as we watch this here, uh, staying on these surface streets, despite the options to get back on the freeways, which will be much more open at this Yeah, hour. just getting some new information from our assignment desk. Uh, so the, the initial, uh, uh, we've been talking about this as a possible murder suspect, um, also wanted for assault on a sheriff's deputy. Again, Riverside wow. County Sheriff's deputy. Um, not clear uh, if if that was they were trying to apprehend this person potentially for murder, and then the assault happened. Still need more details there as we now go into a uh, residential neighborhood driving alleyway. through an alley here, but mm -hmm. the, narrow you know, alley. The, the, Look the, at the, that. Those are two things, Rick. <laughs> if you want to say two things that will get uh. law enforcement uh, riled up and uh, and and get the attention of law enforcement, it is one to be a murder suspect and two to then try to attack a a, a sheriff's deputy as well. And absolutely. So we're learning more about this. So is that in addition to the uh, murder suspect, the, the we, murder we, one? We believe or, it uh, is I... in addition to. Uh, we, we do not have any okay. um, reports, at least yet, of, and, uh, thankfully, of, of uh, you know, the death of a, of a law enforcement officer. But um, we're, we're still trying to get details on everything that's happening here. And that that uh, assault that may have occurred during the early stages of this pursuit, that typically happens. We see that where once a suspect knows that he or she is being tracked uh, and then chased by law enforcement, uh, they start driving erratically and perhaps uh, he did bump uh, an, a Riverside County Sheriff's uh, deputy. He, we don't know that yet. We don't know the details on that, but that does happen uh, at times. Or maybe it was a different situation that happened a day or more ago. Uh, those are questions that will be answered. But the bottom line, this uh, suspect, this an alleged murder suspect and uh, a suspect uh, who's uh, wanted for assault on a sheriff's deputy is ripping through a residential area in very narrow alleys where kids could be playing. People could be walking their dogs. It's sunset, it's evening, it's springtime. The temperatures are beautiful out there right now. No strong winds. People out enjoying Southern California. Uh -oh, and they're, here we they're go. at risk. And there you go right there. Yeah, just a quick left turn there, a hard left turn. And that vehicle was coming upon uh, that, uh, that suspect in that black pickup truck. Uh-oh, so okay. And there's, oh, there's, there's a law unit. enforcement okay, so vehicle right there. there. It looked like yep. he made a turn, so and it's going to be on, on, on his tail. We'll see if he's able to catch up with him here. So now it, it looks like law enforcement. Or if the driver just came upon him, you know, because he may not White be one White and Bonita, uh, again, deputies. still in still in the Pomona area. And those are the turns right there that are so dangerous. Coming out of an alley, a narrow alley, and really not looking. Right. You could see that law enforcement helicopter that just uh, zipped by in front of our Skyfox uh, camera there, our extreme nav system. We always have you covered there. You can see the speed, uh, the speedometer there in the upper right corner, indicating how fast that suspect is trying to evade the law enforcement agencies in pursuit. They're ripping through that stoplight. And again, they can technically write this suspect up for every single traffic mm -hmm. violation. Doing loops, 180s, it's even hard for us, even with our extreme nav, to keep track of uh, the exact location. But this is a really dangerous situation. And again, not a good situation uh, to, to try that pursuit uh, intervention technique in right. terms of that pit maneuver, trying to spin that vehicle out. It's a heavy duty vehicle and there's a lot going on likely in this residential area. And, and Rick, to just get some clarifying information from what I said before, because we are getting more information from law enforcement now. So this started, this person is a murder suspect, law enforcement, Riverside County sheriffs in the neighborhood surveilling the murder suspect. At that point, during the surveillance of the murder suspect, a deputy is struck. Not clear if that is with a vehicle uh, or, you know, uh, some other sort of interaction. At that moment, the pursuit began, 
and uh, that is what we are still looking at now at 6:36 uh, on uh, this evening. Um, the pursuit of this murder suspect, who also uh, was violent uh, with law enforcement uh, as well. And, and very interesting how brazen the suspect is. It, it appears that that window, that driver's side window, if I'm not mistaken, Alex and Christine, has been rolled down pretty much the entire yep. duration of this pursuit. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, is that they're running because if, uh, if indeed this uh, male suspect driving the vehicle or the passenger, we're not sure, uh, is the murder suspect right. they're going to do whatever they can why do they run because they want to get out of, they want to get out of uh, out of the way of police and try just by that slim chance to get well, away well, into a gas station get gas does this come to an end right here is this oh my or God. no or is that a drive up or is he using this to turn i i could not tell if that was a drive through yep. or a gas station but just use that as a little cut through yeah. and now on uh, gary avenue staying in the same area though i will say knowing my job ah through that intersection there. That's where I just, you, you got to hold your breath because so, you don't know what's going to happen. At the the bottom line is. Look at the speeds here yep. too, Rick. Uh, uh, in up the upper there. right. Yeah. Staying, staying in the same area now, though, I will say that. It seems like uh, the suspect now is doing loops in the same Pomona area. You know, the Pomona Fairgrounds there near where the 60, the 10, the 57 all merge, the 10 to the north, the 60 to the south. The 210 is the farthest east-west freeway to the north of Foothill, Route 66, uh, a, a, as we all know it here in Southern California. And off to the right there, uh, slowing down. Whoa. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, Ooh, so Thankfully, close. no collision there. Yeah. And, and we know that, that, was, there, that, there, was within that there inches. can be a, a collision. We, we do have some video from a little earlier. If you're just joining us, uh, usually watching TMZ at this time, we want to show you. Uh, so on the bottom of your screen, this was from a little earlier. You see the driver leading right there uh, to a crash between two other vehicles, not involving the driver itself, but because the driver was so brazen, there was a crash. Well, I, I think you kind of were saying they, they might have bumped bumpers, not so much a uh, high-speed kind of crash if they were going at full speed, but kind of uh, tapping bumpers. But you do have to wonder why that one vehicle did bump into the, you know, like a head-on type of uh, crash there because... I, I'm thinking okay. perhaps they Whoa. were. Oh, okay. look at that. Whoa. Looking on really the right, going against that traffic so there. Coming down Town Avenue, which is a very busy uh, thoroughfare there. 50 miles an hour. Now back over to the right. Thankfully staying in his lane, so to speak. But still, and, and they're watching this. Law enforcement agencies uh, from all over that area are watching this. And they're at a command post. Now in through that inner area rear because they're seeing the backup because there's a light here. And this is a situation he's going to rip through that light, make a hard right turn there onto Arrow Highway, still staying in the same area. Uh, that w How are they going to bring this to an end? Because every second that this pursuit continues with the erratic nature, Christine and Alex, of this suspect, this alleged murder suspect, this suspect who allegedly uh, made impact with a uh, sheriff's deputy from the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, how long are they going to let this go on? Well, Rick, I'm wondering now if law enforcement does indeed know who this driver is. If they were doing surveillance right. on a murder suspect, the driver then <sighs> took off, the and that's where you have the assault okay. on a deputy. Um, I'm wondering There's, if and those you units know are where right this behind person him. lives and yeah. who they are. It seems like they, it. It seems like they have they have more uh, intel on the suspect uh, than, than than we do, and that they were uh, from what from what you you and uh, Alex reported, Christine, that you both you both heard that they were tracking. They knew about this suspect. They were essentially going to try to perhaps serve a warrant or arrest that suspect. And in that particular situation, you could see all those units there. Yeah. There was a there was okay, a, an opportunity for that driver to get away. So I'm looking at a comment here on our Facebook page. Somebody's saying uh, that police should do more to not let him get away. The question is, if this is a murder suspect, are they armed with a weapon? And then do you do a pit maneuver? Do you do a spike strip? I mean, Rick, has the driver been going in a similar area where they know how to predict where to throw out a spike strip? No. And you could see, because that helicopter down below there that you just saw on the lower uh, portion of our screen there, that's a law enforcement helicopter. And it appeared that that was a Riverside County 
uh, air unit there uh, tracking this. We're up in Skyfox above those law enforcement helicopters, which are down in the dirt, as we call it, uh, for all, from all my years up in Skyfox, four or 500 feet oh. AGL. We're up at about 1,000 feet or higher watching this. And, 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 and that's the question we just don't know the answer to, Christine and Alex, uh, in terms of they're coordinating. They're talking to the air unit. They're talking to these units on the ground. This is a mutual aid situation. Now on Laverne Avenue, staying in the same general area, still driving very dangerously, very erratically. As I keep saying, every second this pursuit goes on, there is the opportunity for somebody, some innocent person, a pedestrian, a bicyclist. Ah, that's a great shot there. You can see that uh, against ooh, traffic there to ooh, be heard. Ooh. Uh, and, and you could say, what is this guy? This, oh no, that's a that's a that's a unit. That's an. Uh, it, it appeared first that it was an unmarked unit. That's a. That's a but they're trailing heavy this, duty uh, this vehicle. Suspect. There. They're not giving up at all. They're yeah. not giving up at all. They're 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 staying on this suspect. They want to bring him uh, into custody again. An alleged murder suspect and an individual who we're just hearing now that uh, may have uh, had some sort of incident with a sheriff's deputy as well, which adds to. The, uh, the, the energy here, trying to bring this suspect into custody, an alleged murder suspect. The bottom line is that this suspect was lit up at some point, didn't pull over, and yeah. the pursuit was on. And it's gone on from well, the Inland Empire into L.A. County, back towards the I.E., on the 60 freeway, first westbound coming out of Riverside County into L.A. County, exiting in Diamond Bar in Los Angeles County, doing a quick 180, back onto the 60 freeway eastbound. He encountered a huge backup on the 60 because there was a problem at Central Avenue, which I was tracking with the California Highway Patrol. And then now on surface streets in that same general area, very close to now the San Bernardino and Los Angeles county line and it's unclear if, if this suspect even knows this area at all and we see these pursuits at alex and christine and because sometimes they make a left turn into an alley or in a right. cul-de-sac oh, and up oh, there's Here nowhere we go. to go so, so we'll now see. we're in a parking, parking lot. lot uh and now we're getting back on to uh oh so now there's that there's oh, that heavy that. duty oh, law wow. enforcement vehicle almost tried to yeah hit them these there. units are all over they are all and and one one benefit to law enforcement now is that because uh -oh. the suspect Wrong is way. choosing Wrong to way. stay against Over train traffic tracks. through the rail system there that's that's the MetroLink rails that run east and west uh, coming out of the IE into LA County there what they're able to do now because the suspect is choosing to stay in a Ooh, general uh -oh. vicinity in oh. this uh -oh. area off oh, the wow. uh. traffic wrong way and traffic wow uh, there's units all over there's uh -oh. units to the oh Ooh. Wow. You Again, almost want to look away because you don't want to see how this could end. <sighs> and, oof, that, okay, so this is, this is getting here. more and more dangerous. We're now high stakes going the wrong way against, against traffic, traffic at against 60 traffic. miles an hour. Uh, this Avenue. desperate murder suspect who uh, also apparently attacked a sheriff's deputy on the loose. And you feel for all of the uh, folks right now who do not know what is coming and their direction as They're this coming uh, truck He's is driving. He's heading northbound, north, northbound in southbound lanes, Alex uh, and Christine, on Town Avenue, which is a highly trafficked trafficked area. You can see that white sedan pulling over to the right. Okay. They, these hmm. drivers don't know. They're coming up there southbound. We now right. they can well, at least we avoided a collision there. Boulevard. Yeah, which yeah. is good Route news 66. that we avoided this a collision is, this, there. I mean, the, the, the uh, thing that also, you know, if and when there is a, a end to this pursuit, the, the apprehension of these suspect or suspects is also a very dangerous situation because we, we know that there's at least two people in that truck. We don't know if there are more. We know at least one of them is wanted for murder. We know that at least one of them assaulted a, an officer. Now this guy, again, throwing his hand out the window, taunting the law enforcement behind him as he drives through traffic. Oh, now up onto the, on the, the sidewalk. sidewalk. Up on the oh, sidewalk. No. Oh. On the sidewalk, 60 miles an hour. That's Foothill Boulevard. Ooh. That's a 60. You wonder about that car that, that, there. Is, that is Route 66. Route 66 that parallels the 210 freeway there, but now made a right turn back onto Gary Avenue. Again, staying in the same general vicinity. And it's unclear if that's just by chance or perhaps this suspect knows this area, although we know that this started well east of this location. 95, 80 miles an hour on Gary Avenue here. This uh, this is, again, I'm, 
every every second, every minute, Alex and Christine. I we're just I, we're, I'm holding my breath here because I've seen yeah. so many of these situations and where where just an innocent person is either struck, a, a pedestrian, a bicyclist. Okay, now he's he stopping? something stopping here. The way law enforcement uh, uh, nope, are acting. Nope, did a 180. Turn around. Did oh my Back now south on Gary Avenue. So uh, northbound on oh, Gary wrong Avenue, way now again. southbound wrong on Gary Avenue. Ugh. Speed 75, 80 miles an hour. This, this isn't is a freeway, folks. This, yeah. is a, this is a major thoroughfare here on Gary Avenue. And, uh, and you know, we, we, we talk about Alex and Christine. Have we ever seen anything like this? Is this the, 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 the most insane pursuit that we've seen? No, it's not. We've seen this situation play out so many times. Right. And I believe that there has been an uptick during COVID times as well with these pursuits. Uh, and, and all we can do is hope and pray that this ends where nobody who's an innocent person out there, whether they be in a vehicle, they're walking, they're running, they're riding their bike, are not injured. Well, and it's interesting, Rick, when you, the way you phrase that, because, you know, when we first joined this pursuit uh, about a, a, an hour ago, a little more than an hour ago, that, you know, it was like, okay, this guy is just driving through traffic. What is this? And as we've been together, watching this together with our viewers, we learn that he's wanted for murder, that he's wanted for assaults on, on a deputy, that he is clearly driving erratically, that he's willing to go against traffic, that he has thrown the middle finger at law enforcement out the window, thrown evidence out the window, and all of these things that have made what started as a pretty benign pursuit where we didn't even know what he was wanted for has turned into a really dangerous situation and one of the dangerous more dangerous situation. pursuits we've seen in, in some time, Rick. And, and now and we see pedestrians there's out somebody there. On the, exactly. Again, taking pictures, video, you please, please stay inside safely uh, because you have no idea. We already saw this driver went up on the curb for a short time. Uh, and and you're, you're putting yourself in danger. If you have your kids out there, you're going to put them in danger. Bottom line, please stay inside. Don't try to be a hero. You don't need to record it. You can watch it right here from Skyfox. We've got great pictures. We have our extreme nav system tracking exactly where geographically here in Southern California where this pursuit is. All right, now it looks like this is right up against the tracks. Those are Metrolink tracks, which run east-west here, still staying in the uh, same general vicinity here. Uh, and and think, there's more people. There, there you go. Yep. Recording people right there. on the corner. The, the one thing, on the side, yeah. very quickly, uh, Alex mm -hmm. and Christine, the one, the one thing that's, that is good about the situation is that this, this alleged murder suspect and a suspect who who may have Rick. had uh, uh, an incident with a sheriff deputy, that they're staying in the same neighborhood, so all officers all over are holding traffic and trying to Rick, prevent anybody here. from getting hurt. And this driver now slowing down. Yeah, this, this driver coming to a crawl here after that intersection there where there were people there on the sidewalk. Now, we've talked about this driver staying in the same vicinity for some time now. We're talking about the Pomona area here, being on Gary, being on Town Avenue. You have to wonder, did that driver know those people on the corner? They seem to be reacting to the driver or not. But that driver did come to a slow there. And more people there on the street reacting, perhaps. Getting closer. I yeah, mean, are they going to try? This is, this, this the guy. speeds are down. The speeds are down under 35 miles yeah. an hour. That's typically the threshold. But this is a, this is a heavy-duty truck. To spin that vehicle out uh, is not an easy task. But this is the closest that I've seen uh, this unit. And it's a canine unit there. And yeah. it's unclear if that's still the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. They are the lead agency. That's the agency that we heard that there was some sort of confrontation, some sort of incident where this uh, alleged murder suspect uh, had uh, some uh, some type of uh, situation with a deputy from the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Well, it's slowing down a little not bit. Not only here. that, remember they were doing surveillance on a murder suspect when that happened with the deputy there, that assault on the deputy there. So the question now is, who is that driver and who is that passenger in the vehicle that's been there the whole time during this pursuit that's gotten really dangerous at times? And, and there hasn't, I, I, I keep watching because sometimes we have seen situations where there are passengers in these pursuits. And whenever there's an opportunity, say the pursuit slows down, the vehicle that's being pursued slows down, that that uh, other individual in a passenger side uh, seat in the front there or in the back uh, bail. They jump out because they don't want anything to do with this. We haven't seen that yet, but there hasn't been a lot of opportunities. We're hearing unconfirmed reports, though, that that 
uh, other individual inside this uh, vehicle is a female. Not confirmed, but, it, uh, but it's possible that it's a female there. And it's unclear the relationship between the driver, the alleged murder suspect, and that individual that, uh, that could uh, very well be a female. Slower speeds now back on Gary Avenue, staying in, the, staying in their lane, so to speak, uh, in terms of the neighborhood. And, and it's they could be talking to, to, to family, to friends, to law enforcement. They could have called 911 and said, hey, this is the situation. We've heard that before as well. How do we, how do we end this? What do we do? But definitely seeing a change in the tone of the driver. Would you agree? Yeah, you wonder if, if, the, if something has happened to the vehicle, if the car is running out of gas, or what, what would lead to this, you know, dramatic slowdown um, uh, at, at this point. And, and this is the, the kind of speed, Rick, where you would potentially see a pit maneuver. Yeah, but again, that, that uh, SUV, that uh, law enforcement SUV, uh, just... Uh, you know, 20, 30 feet behind this uh, big, uh, heavy-duty pickup truck. Uh, uh, that's, that's a hard task, but, but, but they can do it. We've seen it before. You can see the driver's side uh, window still rolled down there. Again, perhaps a female inside uh, the front of that vehicle as well, but definitely a change in the tone. Looks like he threw something out again uh, outside, the, it a outside the window there, but still staying on on Gary Avenue, that was the 10 freeway, by the way, that crossed over Gary Avenue. Gary is, uh, again, a north-south street, and they are staying, this, uh, this suspect, this alleged murder suspect that has led uh, deputies from Riverside County, from other law enforcement agencies, on a long-term, high-speed, dangerous pursuit coming out of perhaps Harupa Valley, westbound on the 60 freeway, through Moreno Valley, towards the Riverside Interchange, into L.A. County, towards the 57, Diamond Bar Boulevard, exiting there, making a 180, getting back eastbound on the 60, huge backup because of a bad accident at Central mm -hmm. Avenue that had at least one lane block. He exited the freeway and now pretty much staying on surface streets in this area, now making a left turn onto Holt Avenue from Gary. It's interesting to think of why the driver is staying in the Pomona area. Remember, this started in Riverside around the 215 with Riverside County Sheriff's Department. And now since the driver has gotten off on surface streets, largely staying in this Pomona area. But Rick, can you tell, is the driver going like in circles where they could possibly put out a spike strip? <laughs> That, that, that's a great question, and I will tell you, as I had mentioned just a short time ago, this gives law enforcement an upper hand that the suspect is kind of following the trend of staying in the same general area. That means it looks like something else is just thrown out of the vehicle there again, some, some white object, uh, that they're going to have more law, uh, law enforcement officers, whether it be from local municipalities, whether it be more from the Sheriff's Department, from Riverside County, from L.A. County, because we're in an area right now, uh, as we've got a little bit of a hiccup there, uh, back on it on Skyfox there, uh, that they are able to essentially encompass this whole area, hold intersections that's busy, to hold people back knowing that, you know what, this pursuit might be ripping through this busy intersection, and this driver has shown a tendency to run red lights at a very high rate of speed, endangering the public, so they can set up at those intersections, hold them back, they can set up a spike strip, as you said, they can do whatever they can to, to try to bring this to a safe ending, and now we're in a parking lot here, we'll see how this, how this plays out. Unclear if, if this uh, driver, this alleged murder suspect, has any plan at all, except trying to evade police. Yeah, but again, staying in his Pomona area, which is so interesting. Uh, you, you do have to wonder how much gas is in that vehicle and how long they can go. Okay, passing. whoa, look at oh. that. And the right law enforcement look, right there. So look at see all the swarm that's a, that's of a law enforcement post. vehicles I mean, look there. at how many officers are there. Look at how many officers are there. Like I wow. said, they're, they're just setting up shop in this area because the suspect isn't trying to make, its, make his way north, well away from this area, east or west, now picking up speed again, just yeah. as he thought that perhaps he was going to back off a little bit wow. and, and, and the tone of this pursuit changed. He said, forget it, because he saw all those units. He says, uh-uh, I'm out of here. I'm going to try to do whatever I can because I can. The longer that this pursuit goes on, the longer I'm uh, not in custody. That's the mindset. And you can see all those people on the corner there. It looks like a, a mini market of some sort making a oh, look hard at the passenger right turn. Side. Now into a narrow look at the alley. Passenger side there. Rick, we finally got an inside look there of that passenger in a red shirt. Uh, again, we don't know if that person is a willing participant in this entire pursuit. There's been no attempts to, uh, to, to bail or to let the passenger out. We've been covering this for more than an hour now.
They, and they have their window down as well. Um, we got one unconfirmed report. It could be a female. That has not been confirmed at this time. But now just m ripping through these residential areas. And again, it's a beautiful evening here in oh, Southern California. I We're coming up uh, on 25 minutes uh, or so until sunset. Temperatures are pleasant. There isn't any high winds. People perhaps out after a day at work uh, or what have you, enjoying a spring break week. And, and thankfully, we haven't yet seen anything tragic happen. But uh, with each second, with each minute that goes on, the threat of that uh, is definitely uh, in the air. Now on San Antonio Avenue, back on a busier street here. But as you mentioned, uh, Christine okay. and Alex, still staying in a, the same general area. Look at these people. Now Beware of these people. Lot. Going into yeah, a parking and, lot and, here. Uh, it looks like a, a grocery store parking lot. A mini and mall. And a strip mall. Like type, uh, yep. Uh, people yep. are there, people out for the night with their kids, people parking their vehicles, and then all of a sudden, this comes into There's their neighborhood. In this, this parking lot here. Uh-oh, and, and, and circles and, in the and, parking lot. Oh, oh, Ooh, watch wow, out. across. Oh, oh my oh, God, this is, and you've got these people I mean, that are in the yeah. middle this is, of all this. This is awful. Mm. And this is awful. And that's the other thing where I say it gives law enforcement the upper hand because now they're staging in this area. We saw almost like a little mini command post at that last intersection. But what it also causes is for more and more people to come out. Hey, that's right down the street. Let's go out. Let's check it out. Let's video this. Not safe to do. Please, oh, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. oh make me oh, oh, that. No. I have never break. seen this was just, a pursuit it, end like this. It was just... It oh, was just, no. it was way to end? happen. Will it keep trying officers. to drive? That's a canine. That's a canine unit right now. And that canine is going to go oh. in and, and get that driver if, uh, if there's that opportunity. Uh, Big oh. Rig's pulling up. Big Rig doesn't know. That driver doesn't know what's going on. Gun's drawn there. Uh-oh. It looks like the airbags have been deployed. It looks like the, the passenger side, uh, somebody could be gesturing out there. The windshield wipers are on. That could just be a bump or what have you. But it was a significant, oh, severe man. enough impact with that big rig. And if this vehicle, if this if this pickup this truck and Ellison and Christine and the, and the had an impact to, with anybody, the big rig, it, get me out it, of here. It, 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 a big rig a big rig is the perfect vehicle because other yeah. vehicles, those smaller sedans blame him. would have been taken out. That big rig took that took that crash and now we're surrounding the vehicle and this is where it gets ultra dangerous and it's unclear if the driver of that big rig even knows wait what is this just a, a you know did, was this guy just coming along and hit me does he know probably not he got this it, is a, he sees that, the police that, that, that driver got out of that yeah, truck very quickly because you can yeah. see that many yeah. that many law enforcement behind this guy you can tell this is a serious thing i mean as we as we pull out a little bit you can see just the number of different law enforcement that is there including that uh, police with the canine there uh, and now this this you know we'll see if this turns into a standoff situation we also don't know if the, the could, driver or the suspect the, are injured at all um, by the fact and, and, and that was a pretty hard the collision the passenger there the pass uh, clearly and this is a big heavy duty yeah. pickup truck so if there if this pickup truck was going to collide with anything or anybody this is the, the the right vehicle too, because it appears that the driver of that big rig, thankfully, uh, was okay, was able to get out of the cab, right. and now is in safety. It looks like the the passenger there, in a red shirt, possibly a female, has uh, his or her hands out yeah. at this time. Airbags were deployed. You could see the front end damage to that truck. Well, the, is the drivers, the both driver, of them, are waving their gesturing. arms, Rick. The passenger yep. gesturing, yep. gesturing there, as well. you saw the driver there gesturing. And, and, you have and, to wonder, hang on Rick, hang the, on. You have to wonder if they're going to try to surrender here, but are they trapped in the vehicle? Are they trying to signal to law enforcement that they're willing to give up? Uh, but, but this is a dangerous situation because remember, this is a murder suspect who led police on this very dangerous pursuit with his crash here into this big rig. And, and that vehicle was, was xylophone. You could see that pickup truck. And, and you're right, those, those doors, whether it be the driver's side or the passenger side, may not work at this time. But the bottom line is the officers are communicating with both the driver and the suspect there in the passenger side. And you can see, at least on the, on the passenger side, hands are out. So doing what uh, he or she is told. Unclear if it is a female, but clearly showing we need to see your hands. We're going we're gonna to give you uh, strict commands here. There's a protocol here so that each of you can give yourself up and we'll take you into custody and we'll end this thing all together without anybody else being, uh, being hurt.
Rick, thank you. It is now 7 o'clock. This is the time of the evening where we say welcome to the Fox 11 News special report tonight. A bit of a different tone as we look at the end of this extraordinary pursuit of a murder suspect. Door open. I'm Alex Michelson along with Rick Dickert. Also, Marla Taya is now joining our coverage. Christine Devine will be back with us a little bit later on tonight at 10 after doing a great job with our Door coverage open. here. And, and Rick, what, what we have been just witnessed for people that may be just tuning in to us at 7 o'clock now, uh, this is a murder suspect and a passenger, we presume, uh, uh, that have now uh, led officers in a multi-hour long pursuit. Uh, it ended with a crash into the only vehicle that we can think of that might be bigger and stronger than that truck, <laughs> which is this big yes. rig, probably the only vehicle okay, that could this have is, caused this, this is, much okay. damage to and, it that drove right into and, the big wig rig. And this is, this, is the, this is the real critical part because you can see the driver there in a black uh, shirt showing uh, his hands at this time, uh, trying to get outside the vehicle, but it, it clearly uh, it looks as, as if that door was impacted as well because of that hard front end collision with the big rig there. But uh, it appears that the driver is giving, giving up at this time, trying to exit the vehicle. But uh, again, it's unclear that he's, if, he, if he can get out, he should be getting out with his hands up. So, yeah. and he's not, he's not showing his hands uh, as clearly as he should be, as is the individual in the red Trying shirt to. on the passenger side. Yeah. Now he is. Okay, now he's getting out, and, uh, and, and he's laying out. Looks like he's in red shorts there, crawling away from the vehicle, and uh, looks like his, his, it looks like he, he may be injured. That, and, and it would be that left leg, because look at all that hard impact that was yeah. made on the left side of the vehicle there. So he's looking back, perhaps, at his passenger, possibly a female at this time. Uh, they're, they're watching this from the air, from the ground, giving him strict orders to lay out with, uh, with his hands up, but he's still, he's still not doing exactly what he should be. His hands should be completely off to the left and right, and that's not happening at this time. But yeah. there, well, there we go, there we go. Yeah. So hands, uh, hands invisible uh, sight, and, and Rick, it seems like the passenger uh, can't, can't exit the vehicle. Uh, Rick, we want to bring Marla Teas into our coverage uh, now. And Marla, what an extraordinary few hours it's been here. Yeah, this pursuit getting underway uh, more than 90 minutes ago. There are reports that this started potentially in San Diego County before making uh, their way to Riverside County and then eventually L.A. County. So across three counties, perhaps. And here we are, this violent crash involving this truck and this big rig. As soon as that impact happened, you saw Ooh. those airbags deployed. Yes. Mm. So the suspect, Rick, crawling uh, away. Is this according to officers' orders? Towards? I, the gun's drawn. It's kind of rare. I, I haven't seen this before. There's Ooh. a dog. There's a canine unit there. They're going to take this, this guy into custody regardless. I mean, he's out, man. So Ooh, he's going to be in custody. They're dragging, They're dragging him now. Uh, and those are sheriff's deputies. Uh, and you just mentioned, Marla, and I just got, I'm, I'm following this on social media as well so that we get reports, first-hand rec reports. And we appreciate you on Facebook, on Twitter, that uh, one of our followers said that uh, they saw this starting uh, in the Temecula area at Temecula Park way at 430. Mm. So this has been going on for some time. Now we're going to see, it, it appears that the passenger isn't able to, uh, to exit the vehicle on his or her own uh, uh, will uh, at this time, but clearly putting, uh, putting their hands up. Again, we got, we got word, unconfirmed reports that that is a female. Certainly looks, uh, looks to be the case, and you wonder what kind of injuries uh, this person has and, and what this person's connection to all of this at is. Again, this started as a murder suspect that law enforcement was surveilling, and then when they caught up with this murder suspect, that murder suspect apparently uh, apparently struck a law enforcement officer in some way, which is why they're not taking any chances. Th those are the two things that are about as serious as it gets uh, when it comes to law enforcement. And now the question is, is this uh, female, we presume mm -hmm. that the female is not the the murder suspect. We don't know that. I mean, she could be the murder suspect and he's just the driver. But uh, we don't know her relationship to this driver, um, and uh, we don't know how badly she may be injured because of the impact of that collision. Hopefully, we can get that video um, uh, recue soon where we can watch she, that collision. Okay, now, now here she comes. Here she comes. 
So she's out. She's doing exactly what she's, you know, she's being told uh, over a bullhorn, just clear instructions, hands out. We want to see you lay out on the uh, on the roadway there. And, and again, she could be an innocent bystander. Yeah, walking we in don't high heels backwards. Time. Look at yes. that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so she doesn't appear to be too badly injured. The driver, though, it that's appeared a, that a, his right leg neighbor. was badly injured. And that was where that was the brunt of the impact of that truck hitting that side of the big rig there. And, and we called it. If it was any vehicle that that truck could have struck, it's a big rig that took it down because it, it could have been catastrophic otherwise. Female suspect now being taken into custody, being handcuffed, being detained. We'll find uh. out more about her. The driver, the alleged murder suspect, in custody as well. So this is going to come to a cl conclusion here. Rick, we know th we know the old joke about Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did, uh, except backwards in high heels. I'm not used to seeing the end of one of these with a, uh, a walk backwards in high heels like that. Was quite something uh, no. to see as well. I mean, the good news, Rick, um, considering how unbelievably reckless this driver was 